Transporting in Albion is all the range and it is essential if you want to make any sort of money in the game. Generating silver requires you to move items from market to market and sell them at your best price. Many people do this through safe zones, however the reality is quite often profitable routes include moving through red zones and through black zones. It's profitable for those gankers who will find you and kill you, but it's also profitable for you to run the risk and sell your items at those juicy juicy prices. Now, how do we do this? We do this through finding the best cost benefit situation that we can. And in my case, I found through some experimentation and through some sheer dumb luck it to be the following build. Grizzly bears are essential in my eyes. They are quite expensive at around 1.1 million you will find them ranging from anything from 800k to 1.5 million according to the time of year you buy it since it is an adventurous challenge reward however i do find them to be worth the risk generally speaking you're going to be carrying huge volumes of loot at very high prices today i'm carrying around 730k which considering my set was worth 2 million might not be that profitable however i have just finished carrying over 20 million worth of resources out of the guild hideout and as such i think since i haven't died i am in profit why is the grizzly so good well apart from it having 3500 hp uh, having standard moving speed good armor good magical resist incredible crowd control resistance and the 2250 kilos of max load you are looking also at some incredible passives rush give activates whenever you take damage and you gain 80 percent move speed for four seconds allowing you to run through enemy blockades and uh, just get to your location on top of this an ability which i would highly recommend using very very sparingly is intimidating aura this is really useful if you're caught in the middle of a map as it will create an aura around you for 11 meters decreasing all damage up to 25 enemies within the aura by 70 percent yeah, amazing in the black zone not so good in the roads the ability lasts eight seconds but can be defeated earlier the downside of this ability is it will make you in combat allowing the enemies to block you from exiting the zone if you are close to the exit so in roads especially you're not going to be wanting to use this as there will always be a portal within reach now to add to this build i have a selection of other items starting um, a mace is always nice to have it gives you an additional amount of health regen and maximum health and it's always good to have on you if you get caught and dismounted you're dead sadly as it does not have that much mobility but hopefully this will aid you not getting dismounted the guardian armor is also essential because it gives you an additional 291 armor 238 magic resist in the case of my 6.2 over here and increased health and crowd control resist are essential over here because it will buff your mount small known fact is that your armor and equipment do actually buff your mount as well as yourself so if you're going on your mount right now you can see that i have 85 percent magical resist resistance and 86 percent uh, armor resistance if i take off my armor and let's say put this on that's going to go down significantly and that is not going to be great if i put this back on it makes me much more tankier and much more resilient guardian helmet and guardian boots for that extra health and just a little bit more defense bonuses that you want you want those bonuses to be on defense as much as possible you could go on crowd control resist as well for your armor but it is up to you 
and do like that little bit extra defense as generally your crowd control resist is also being buffed by your shield your shield gives you a decent amount as well as defense a good amount of defense eight percent is a lot it will essentially mean that you will not die in nine hits but in ten so you're going to be looking forward to have at least a tier eight shield on you if you're doing very very expensive transports Four sterling cape is essential because every uh, one minute 47 seconds in a 4.3 it will allow you to ignore a stun a silence or a root this combined with the grizzly bear which allows you to run forward means that it will be very difficult for the enemy team to pin you to the ground and finally and not least my favorite item is the following fishy the fish pie, that is the Frost Peak Dead Eye pie. Very expensive pie, but very useful. Why? It gives you a 15% gathering yield, which is absolutely useless for what you're doing here. What we do use it for is the max load increase of 22.5% and the crowd control resistance by a flat 15% on top of whatever you already have, meaning that you can carry more and uh, essentially you will not be stuck as long. Now I notice I have a tier 2 bow, so I'm going to see what else I can carry with me. We're going to go on a little run. I, I've pretty much emptied all of this. Uh, how much are these? Yeah. Yeah, let's take those. And let's go for a run. Hopefully we do encounter a little bit of a resistance and I die. So you'll feel very amused by my attempt of telling you how not to die transporting. Sadly, they, someone is doing a core down there and I will not be able to intercept as I am doing this transport. Now... Keep in mind whenever you're transporting is do not get distracted by any objectives around you. They will sadly appear when you're transporting and uh, the last thing you want to do while transporting mm. is get off your mount. Your mount is your safe Are fortress. You, you will not get taken down and you cannot be killed while you're on it. But if you do this mount from your mount, you are going to die pretty damn easily because that extra defense of the mount is going to be gone and uh, you'll be left as naked as a fish in the street. Take your time when you go into new zones and just have a look at the minimap and then commit to the road. It's good to understand your position on the minimap close keep your eyes on the closest portals available. In this tunnel zone, it's quite relatively straightforward. If there are gonna be gankers, you're gonna be on the road. Does this mean you go on the dirt? No, you do not. Going on the dirt is a death sentence. They normally will have faster mounts than you. They'll be able to dismount around you, fear you, block you in a corner and slowly whittle your health down, slowly taking away all of your defenses and all of your resistances and chip at your health till you die and they pop you like a piñata at a Christmas or Christmas at a birthday party and take everything that's juicy in your bags. So always just commit to the road, stay there and you're going to be safe in the long run if you do this as uh, it, 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 it's the, the biggest noob trap honestly when ganking people is they panic and they get themselves killed they would have the all the opportunities to run away they either get greedy they panic and that results in their death the good thing about transporting on roads is it's relatively safe in terms of the distance you have to cover there are multiple exits all around the map and you can access these from the roads you get these speed buffs which allow you to move faster so it is also a good way to transport between cities if you find a good roads transport between royal cities be aware that they're probably going to be gankers so something i normally do ahead of this is i go on a tier 3 horse naked and just explore the map see what's there what's not just spend a little bit time scouting and mapping my route going forward this tends to give me an idea if it's safe or not and 
it tends to provide good results. Let's put it that way. I've only died a couple of times with my Grizzly. I, I think quite literally two times. And uh, both times I was carrying eggs, eggs into Carleon. Uh, goose eggs are extremely profitable if you do sell them. And uh, they tend to sell a very good price, especially when the market is on the upturn. I believe right now it is on the upturn as we speak. I just sold all of mine for a good, decent chunk of profit. In between seasons, the economy just kind of collapses and everything becomes ridiculously expensive as there is not as much people producing resources. The big guilds are sleeping and not really gathering. So it's generally a good time if you're a solo player or a small guild for you to make a quick buck. And there you have it, folks. We've run through the entire thing. It's taken only a couple of minutes, but we have built ourselves a safe way. And even if we got attacked, this is very difficult to dismount. Hope you found this video useful. Hope you will be able to transport safely. And uh, next time you're transporting, please tell me where you are so me and my friends can come and protect you on your way. Please take note, I'm being very sarcastic <laughs> um, I, I, I end up getting in trouble. Now look, other transporter. That, that, this is another type of transporter. This is a kind of Ratsa transport, which allows you to transport valuable items uh, really uh, fast, but they're quite often more easily ganked. So I prefer this chunky build in, instead. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely day and uh, yeah, take care. Bye bye.